So how about we do this? How about we get, uh, that was wonderful, and I think, why don't we get an opening statement then from each of our panelists on that fundamental question. You know, how do you bring private sector um, to accelerate the, uh, the SDG? So Mr. Collymore, perhaps you can give us a few remarks and then we'll move on down the line and then we'll open up to questions. Yes, I think just very briefly. Um, th there's been a lot of focus over the last couple of days on the business case behind business getting behind it. Uh, and of course, that's important. But you know, we can't get away from the fact that we have to change the way business does business. And you know, achieving these goals is just the right thing to do. And of course, you know, we, and we can talk a little bit about uh, you know, how businesses can, can capitalize on it, can monetize it. But I think businesses have to change the way they do business. It's just the right thing to do. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think it's an exciting moment in time with the SDGs being agreed with COP21 uh, coming up. Uh, and COP21 is not only about climate, but also hunger and poverty and migration. But at the same moment, this morning, 3,000 mothers somewhere in the world lost their own children. Uh, in the same morning, we are still on a trajectory of 4 to 8 degrees Celsius in 2050. So I think uh, there's no other choice that business who got much more impact over the last 50, 100 years in the world, it takes its responsibility also. I mean, more impact means more responsibility. And that means that we need to take actions. And I'm still surprised of what private-public partnerships can bring, that we, with, as a small company with WFP, uh, now provide nutritious food for 25 million people. I'm still amazed that we could build that in, in eight years. Look what we just did downstairs with Peter Bucker on advocating companies for a price on carbon, saying to governments, let's put a price on carbon. We, as business, need that. And those are statements which can help also the politicians. And I think the main reason why to do that is that nobody can be successful nor even dare to call yourself successful in a world that fails. Yeah, it, uh, so the SDG is uh, so 17, the comprehensive uh, sustainable uh, so, uh, development goals. It is uh, clearly have a uh, so business case and also they can serve as a guidepost of a business. Uh, I think the three key point. One point is uh, the leadership, business leadership, and also the corporate social responsibility and the implementation and the operations. For the symptom chemical harvest of the factory in Tanzania, Africa, and now it also provides so mosquito net, it names this also net. And so, so the very, very so, uh, social contribution to the uh, preventing the sort of malaria, the, so the, uh, many, many th cases. I think that so the SDGs now is a, so, uh, it's a harvest of the road of uh, so target, 17, the target, so it's a, uh, uh, I think that integrating and uh, aligning the so the this uh, corporate uh, target uh, to the each companies, mm -hmm. and so it's also beyond to the so uh, not only the so benefit, but it's also but also the so contribute to society. It's also very important matter. So I, I think all of you um, agree that that SDGs is just as you say, Mr. Collymore, it's just good business, right? You should just uh, it should just be a part of business. So why is it that? Uh, while it's nice that 41% of companies say they make it part of their strategy, why aren't more involved in it, or why don't more commit to that? What do you think the challenges are? I, I think the, the, the three-letter three phrase is, is corporate social responsibility. That's the problem, because people see this in terms of CSR, and it should not be CSR. And again, I can give you examples of how, and in fact, I looked uh, yesterday afternoon, at, I just picked three goals at random. And said, and asked myself, how are we as a company addressing them? Uh, and when I say addressing them, I mean how are we addressing them and making money out of it. And I looked at maternal health care. I looked at um, strengthening domestic financial institutions. And I looked at increasing the share of renewable energy. And in all of those areas, um, Safaricom has actually commercialized and monetized and making money and making a difference to the society in which we operate. Would anyone else like to take that question, though? I, I ab absolutely agree. Uh, it, CSR is a great thing, but insufficient in itself. We have to get to the heart of the business model, uh, the shared value, the, the inclusion, and also building sustainability in. And uh, I think there's, there's 
plenty of opportunities to share best practice in that. Uh, one of the initiatives has been the business call to action. UNDP hosts the secretariat for that. We have uh, uh, quite a lot of major companies uh, involved, many experiences to share of, of, of what works, but we're going to hear about those in the, the next session as well, what mm -hmm. kind of commitments people are making. But there's no shortage of good ideas and innovation in this space. Well, could, could one of you um, give me examples of where, you know, melding S an SDG goal or, uh, or an SDG, you know, with your corporate strategy or where you've seen it work and why did it work? Well, I gave already, uh, I mentioned already our collaboration with World Food Program. Mm -hmm. um, as DSM, we started to collaborate eight years ago with the World Food Program. We are the largest micronutrition manufacturer in the world. And we are discussing with WFP, can we use our knowledge, our products, in your benefit for your beneficiaries? And I'm amazed myself that we could work out in eight years, uh, develop new products with our innovative uh, tools, uh, develop new application mechanisms, how to bring it in the best way with the beneficiaries and in a way that it fits with local needs and local habits. And that partnership has been very successful. Now, we are a company of 13, 14 billion dollar size. I mean, there are much bigger companies here in this room. If all of those companies would set up these kind of partnerships, we can abandon hunger, one of the Millennium Development Goals, or SDG goals now, and, and we show that, that that is possible. Is it at the end of the day to the benefit of the company also? Of course. At the end of the day, if those people come out of poverty, come out of misery, will be economic um, uh, participants as well in the future. Is that wrong? No, because the best way to get out of poverty is economic development. So I think it is possible, those kind of things. And it is just the hard work, do it, and, and you will see that it can result into astonishing benefits. Let me give you a, a, a very concrete example. We're, we're a mobile phone company. We're half your size, or maybe even smaller than that. Um, but we didn't let that stop us. We looked at the challenge of poor Kenyans or poor East Africans having access to grid electricity. In Kenya, more than 80% of the population don't have access to grid. And so we've partnered, which also comes down to, I think, um, goal number 16 or 17, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, we partnered with, with a couple of people and 17. <laughs> and we have, thank you, thank you. We'll all get our heads around it by the end of this week. Um, so we, we partnered with a small company. We've bolted together some existing technology. Don't forget, we're a mobile phone company. Bolted together some existing technology, which was a SIM card, which was mobile money, which was uh, solar, solar panels. And we've now allowed um, or facilitated 250,000 East Africans to now connect to renewable energy at a cost which is lower than the, the, than the alternative and which is more environmentally friendly because it saves uh, the use of kerosene. And you know, over the next four years, we will save about 325,000 um, tons of CO2 emission equivalent. Sure. Um, we are currently connecting about 500 homes a day. Uh, and we would have... Um, we would have saved the consumers about $187 million in that period. At the same time as we would have made money out of it. We would have had 5 million M-Pesa transactions every year. And so that's a very concrete example of how we have taken a conventional thing. And most of you who use um, your mobile phone companies, whichever it is, all they do is they do airtime and data. And we've just said, well, we've got this technology. How can we address that problem? And incidentally, how can we also make money out of it? How about you, Mr. Takami? I'm curious about in Japan, um, how important you know, are these SDGs to Japanese companies and really throughout Asia? And now the so Japanese companies also the, so want to enlarge the, so the market outside Japan. And so the uh, activities of a global is the, so the, now is the, so gradually is the, so the extended. And the, but uh, uh, now is the so SDG the mind. The, so Regulatory, the, so the, uh, it's a, so most of the Japanese companies that doesn't know. They, they, they're not aware of them, right? <laughs> so, yeah, but, but it's a MDG. MDG is a goal, is a, so the uh, understanding. But the SDG is a, so the, so many target the same things. But it's a, so <laughs> right. the, yeah, yeah, contribute to the society. It, this mind is a, so Japanese mind is the same. 
So are, are there some that when they do learn about the 17 um, goals, are there some that resonate more with them than others? Yeah, but it's so <laughs> not so clear. But uh, each company is so can understand it. So the, this is so the, uh, each company is so to try to the, so the import, uh, import in home to so so the people, so employees. I think in the future, is so now is so also uh, not only the benefit, but also the contribute to the society, the mind. Is so that it, most of the company, Japanese company, mm -hmm. is the same. Yes. Um, are there goals that are more um, represented or focused on than others? Are there some that are underrepresented that should be more, um, you know, more focused on, you know, within, you know, within companies? Well, I, I think each, each company will decide what best suits its uh, it, its strategies and, and interests. But if I could put in a plug for the women and girls, <laughs> uh, the um, look look, where could the biggest breakthrough in development be? It could be in bringing 50% of the population up to equal opportunity, status, <laughs> rights with the other 50%. That is the, the civil bullet in, in development. So I think it, across all the interventions, across the goals, gender equality and women's empowerment is mainstreamed. And, and if that can really be, be consciously built into all of the, the business interventions uh, in support of the SDGs, that, that's tremendously helpful. Corruption. I think corruption. Corruption has been lost a little bit in goal 16, mm. and I think that um, you know it needs to be pulled out. Well, I think companies, all companies, all sectors in the world can contribute. If you look to the 17 SDGs, there's room, there's opportunities for all companies. It is your own imagination mm. which can limit you. And if I pick out one, indeed, next to hunger, another topic which is very close to my heart, is of course this whole issue of climate change. And there's so much innovation, so much new ideas to be contributed from business. Uh, if you look to solar, there's so much improvement still to be possible. And I can even envision one day, maybe 100 years, maybe 50 years, maybe 75 years, I don't know, further down the road, in which we say energy savings, ah, that is so 2015. <laughs> we have now a situation in which we use really the solar energy of the world in such a cheap way. So, and that innovative power will come from companies. You cannot expect from governments to develop those technologies. So therefore, we all can contribute quite a bit. How about you, Mr. Tagal? Is there a goal that, that, that you think is, you know, as Mr. Colin Moore said, corruption was, was one that he thinks need to be, needs to be brought out more? Yeah, it's uh, so the woman, so each woman, the each children. <laughs> Uh, it's also institution. It's a very important matters. Now it's also in Japan. Now it's also the government side is also the make effort to increase the number mm -hmm. of uh, women so management. And so the make effort is so the it's so uh, finally is so connected to the development of an uh, economy. I think so. That's also uh, our company is also the integrating and the aligning the this uh, corporate uh, target. Uh, to into the so core business, it's also very important matters. So w w yeah, go ahead. Yes, I, I was just going to mention one other uh, relatively neglected area, which Prime Minister Abe also provided a forum for at the World Assembly of Women in Japan at the end of August, and it's sanitation. And it was wonderful to have a session at that assembly without everybody sniggering when you talked about the importance of toilets, <laughs> uh, because. You know, for, for women and girls, this is, this is really critical to have safe sanitation. You know, a lot of girls miss out on school because there aren't toilets or they don't have access to uh, sanitary uh, material during, during menstruation. If women and girls have to go out and seek toilets uh, in the community at night or even in broad daylight, they are at risk of physical violence. Uh, and of course, good sanitation is so, so basic to health as well. Uh, so I'd, I'd sort of run up a flag for that part of what they call the wash sector, the, the water and sanitation <laughs> sector, because we did very well on water with the MDGs, but not so well on sanitation. I was on a, a, a panel with a, a minister in one 
major emerging economy uh, a couple of years ago and he waved his cell phone and said, what's wrong with this country? Virtually everyone's got a cell phone, but very few have a toilet. Can we prioritise toilets? So I, I just want to run a, a flag up for that because it's something people perhaps don't feel as polite to talk about, but it's so fundamental. It's so important. So as important. a mobile phone company, I, I think there's nothing wrong with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I think, you know, um, <clears throat> if you think, if I were to announce to you that a, a jumbo jet has just crashed with 500 children, you'd all be horrified. But every six hours, the equivalent of a jumbo jet crashes yeah. with children because they've, died, they've just died of diarrhea, and that is, is hygiene-related. So, and it's a disaster. You know, it's an absolute disaster. Look at our response when we saw that tragic, tragic picture of a, a child being washed up on the shore. Imagine 500 of those every, every six hours. So I absolutely agree with you. But I also agree that it's good for people to have cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> so those who are the deeply involved in attaining SDGs, um, y you know, y you're so involved in it and you understand why there's a payoff and there's not just a payoff uh, in terms of uh, adding value to the world that you live in, but also, as you mentioned, uh, you know, for example, with your own mobile phone company, it actually does literally, you know, literally pay off. Uh, but again, you know, I look at the statistic that PwC survey of you know 33 percent or 31 um, percent of civilians don't know about these goals and and are, are are not aware. So you know you can't change companies, right? You can't change um, the private sector uh, if you don't have people demanding that, right? Your consumer is demanding it, your shareholder is demanding it, uh, and your employees as well. So how do you? Um, you know, how do you encourage that? How does that change? How do you change the numbers on that? So a little plug, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. A little plug for the Global Citizen uh, Festival this, this evening. Um, uh, you know, we're trying to reach seven billion people in seven days uh, because we figured out that with the MDGs, it took us all far too long, including me, far too long to kind of get our heads around it and then we were running out of time. And so it's important that the citizen demands, not just of government, but demands of the business sector demand that they start to step up to these goals and clearly state what it is that your, your companies that you buy your products from, what are you going to do about those goals? At the end of the day, we need to have a much better understanding that the only successful way to run businesses, to run any organization, is to run it for all your different stakeholders. And that is the only long-term success model. And I, I want to nuance a little bit your approach that there are so many companies who do not join yet. Um, if you look to the Netherlands, which we started as an initiative already a year ago, let's assume that the SDGs today would be agreed. What can organizations, government, companies do? And we started an initiative with 70 organizations, governmental, NGOs, companies, who take the initiative to work out what the country as the Netherlands could contribute to the SDGs if they would in a year from now at that moment in time will be agreed. So they are ready right now to do that. And in that sense, I want that to say to the other companies who still need to follow this, the power of the followers is maybe even stronger than the power of the leaders. Mm. Because the followers have one power that leaders do not have. And that is the power of amplification. And the power of amplification is owned by the followers. And if they mobilize that power, we can really have an impact. Wonderful. Um, do we have time for one or two questions? Or are we, uh, no, OK, I, 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 I'm being given an, a look of no. <laughs> can, can I just, uh, so just, just before we get to that, we, can, can I just say there's one yes, other? Yes, 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 you may. There's one other uh, constituency that, that we really have to get engaged in this, and that's the shareholders. Because the yes. investment community have never asked me, of all the investment uh, roadshows I've done, have never asked me about sustainability. And I think shareholders, pension companies, employees need to really uh, start to demand. Well, if you talk about the financial sector, let me add in this one thing, and you mentioned pension funds. Let's not only uh, look to the financial sector that the financial sector does not understand and only wants to have one dimension. Because a big part of the financial sector, like you mentioned correctly, are the pension funds. And the pension funds are all of us. So this is a vicious circle. We also, ourselves, can influence our own pension funds how to act in a responsible way. Wonderful. Thank you so much to our panelists. For
wonderful discussion. Thank you.